Hi there everyone and welcome back to my channel. First of all, I would really like to thank you for all of your positive and negative responses on my channel. That really helps me to understand what you think about my videos and what kind of stuff do you want to see. So in this video tutorial, I would be extending a previous flow situation that we have already covered and that is the channel flow. So as you can see that uh, when I uploaded my channel flow tutorial, some of you were curious about how you can handle the temperatures in the flow situation or how you can monitor the velocity or the temperature profiles along different cross sections. So I'd really like to point those things here in this tutorial. So rather than going through a hypothetical problem, I take this problem from the book called Heat and Mass Transfer. It's uh, written by Sengel and it's, it's a fairly good book. It's usually used for undergrads. So, okay, I'll use the basic. So in this problem, we have the oil. We have an oil that's flowing through a lake. So the reason why it's flowing through a lake so that the surrounding temperature could be considered as a uniform. And we have a 200 meter long pipe and the diameter of the pipe is 0.3 meter and the inlet temperature of oil is 20 degrees and the inlet velocity is 2 meter per second which is assumed to be constant throughout the whole length. So it's not a pressure driven flow because we don't have pressure values at the inlet and the outlet and uh, we can assume that the velocity remains constant throughout the flow so that can be maintained using a substantial pressure gradient across the flow so we'll just go with the inlet velocity boundary condition and inlet temperature boundary condition wall temperature boundary conditions and the geometry that is all the data that we have here and we have to evaluate what is the exit temperature so the condition is fairly similar to the channel flow we have a 200 by 0 0.3 meter of channel so I'll just confirm you with the dimension over here, 200 by 0 0.3. And then we used the concept and we created a surface from the sketch. And this is our fluid body. And that's all for the geometry part. For the meshing, uh, it's again the similar Cartesian or very structured kind of mesh that we are using. I've put a refinement to make it more refined because this side is very large as compared to the lateral height. So I don't want to create like big blocks over here. So as you can see in the statistics for the mesh, I have like almost uh, less than half a million of elements. So that's uh, significantly larger for such simpler kind of problems. And we have the walls over here. We have an inlet and we have an outlet over here so because the pipe is very large so you cannot really see the inlet and outlet from here so that's all the setup that we need to do for the geometry and the meshing and then comes the physics part which i think is the most important thing here so for the physics we know about the inlet and the outlet but inlet boundary conditions not the outlet boundary conditions so we'll just assume that it's uh, the we'll just keep them to the default and for the outer walls, we'll give them a temperature being constant and a no slip boundary condition. And as you can see that uh, because the mesh is so huge, so it's gonna take a bit of time to get it display here. So in the meantime, I'd like to talk to you about uh, the flow itself. So yeah, so because we have oil as a flowing medium, and uh, they have got the values, the the thermal and the proper thermal properties and the flow properties from the table. So we'll we'll just feed these values directly to the fluent, and you can see a dimensionless constant called the Prandtl number. So well, Prandtl number is uh, essentially it's the ratio of uh, momentum to the thermal diffusivity, and uh, in the case of pipe flow, it also represent um, like how long it would take for the thermal boundary layer to develop and it's uh, usually it's like directly proportional if you if you go into the mathematics it's uh, directly proportional the Prandtl number it's directly proportional to the thermal entry length 
so in my last uh, channel flow tutorial i talk about like uh the flow develops i mean if uh, you have an entry and the flow enters so at the entry uh the velocity profile is more like rectangle because you define a constant you try to define a constant uh velocity so as the flow progresses and because of the no slip condition as and the formation of the boundary layer there's a slight change in the flow profile and it changes for a distance and after a distance it doesn't change so that particular distance up to which it changes it's called as the entry length so if we are talking about the velocity profile then we call it as uh, the ent uh, the hydrodynamic entry length that represents for velocity profile and if we're talking about the temperature profile then it's called as the thermal entry length so thermal entry length depends on the reynolds number parental number while the hydrodynamic it does it doesn't depend on the parental number it only depends on the reynolds number oh wow it's still going on maybe i should have kept the mesh a bit smaller i've actually already simulated this case but with uh, a relatively coarser mesh so maybe i'll just use the parameters from there because this particular mesh is going to take a lot of time yep over here so yeah as i was talking about you that uh, the parental number it uh, affects the thermal entrance length and because uh, as you can see this particular value of parental number it's around 10000 and let me tell you that for water it's around 7 so you can try to imagine that if the flowing medium has been water the length would have been much shorter because it's directly proportional so you can say that for oil the thermal entry length is much huge than as compared to the liquids and that means that for oils um, you cannot really say that the temperature profile has been stable up to maybe uh, i'm not sure like right now we don't know what's the numerical value of the entry length but if it's more than 200 we can say that the profile hasn't been developed yet and we can say we we cannot claim that the flow has been fully developed okay i'll probably just close this one for a while so yeah so i tried to do this simulation for a case of water earlier and this one is for the oil actually it's it's just it says that it's a copy of water because these two are just duplicates so i'll probably just open this one once i'm able to close this because uh this is taking longer than i think come on please i'll just close it forcefully act process Oh, yeah, that's like a good boy. No. Yep. So I'll just open this up. Yep. And I want to show you how we input both the velocity and the thermal data, because right now we have the inlet velocity, we have the inlet temperatures. So we need to know how do we input those things into our GUI. So that's important because if you don't know how to do that, it's going to be tricky. So you can see that's our pipe that is very long and everything is steady. We're, we're trying to find the steady solution. And because our fluid is a liquid, so we'll keep the solver pressure based. For the model, I've just turned on the energy equation. And for the, uh, for the flow, we can get the value of reynolds number because we have diameter we have velocity and we have density so using the value of reynolds number we can see that it's 666 which is less than 2000 or, or they say 2300 so that means that the flow is laminar and we can use the laminar model do not use the k epsilon model which are the turbulent models because in many tutorials you see that they use k epsilon model because they are not sure about uh the reynolds number so because we are sure about the values so we just use the laminar model that makes the model simpler for the material i've said that it's oil i've put up the density specific heat thermal conductivity k 
viscosity this is the dynamic viscosity we have put this values from here right and then in the cell zone we say that it's a fluid and it's oil so just change it if you have because in ANSYS by default we have air so if you create a material don't forget that in this surface body zone you have to put it as oil otherwise it would be air by default so this is inlet here we define it as a velocity inlet and you see there I defined velocity and there is a small tab called thermal and in that I defined temperature because we have a temperature of 20 degrees here so well it's 293 Kelvin and then we define the wall and that's a stationary wall and that's the boundary condition for the velocity and for the temperature it's 273 I should actually define 273.15 because it's 0 degrees centigrade and also for this one that makes sense all right and everything else is the same we are using simple method so if you have not studied CFD so far I will suggest you to take a course on CFD as as much as you can because uh, there are some some schemes that you might not be familiar with so well simple is a method to couple the pressure and the velocity especially for the incompressible cases so right now just use simple method and uh, we'll calculate an initial solution and then we'll just run our ca calculations and we'll try to see if the solution converges or not hopefully it should converge because it's a laminar case fairly easy uh, and very simple geometry and you see it quickly converges and we'll just close this one and we'll go to results so our aim is to check uh, the, the exit temperature of the water uh, of the oil and we can uh, I'll also teach you how you can check the different profiles because sometimes you have to plot the velocity or the temperature profiles at different cross section especially at the exit so we will also be doing that and that's that's a really cool thing